Hey, what's going on everybody out there today? I just wanted to do an art store haul. So this is what I got from the um, Blit Art Materials. And I also went to Michael's and picked up a few things. So we're just gonna go through and see what I got. Let's get it. First thing I got is some acrylics. Um, I wanted to try the Amsterdam acrylics to see how smooth they were. Plus this color is exactly what I need. Um, Car Carmigen. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Oh, Carmine. Wow. Yeah. Don't, uh, I don't know why the first one says, it's, I guess it's written in English, uh, uh, German or whatever country they, whatever language they speak in Amsterdam. Um, the first one and then permanent blue violet. Is that one also for a painting I'm doing? You're going to see that. That's going to be dope. This one is Carmine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm dumb. Anyway. Um, so see how smooth it is. It's nice and buttery for sure. I'm going to see how it spreads with the brush in a minute. Um, one of these brushes. Oh yeah, they definitely feel nice and loaded up. Um, very, very smooth acrylics. So I had to, they uh, just got these in Michaels. So I definitely wanted to see, look, it's, it's very pigmented. Very nice and smooth. Some some acrylics, especially when you mix them with water, they just don't spread right. And the cheaper ones tend to be really kind of want to say chalky, but that's probably not the proper word. It just you'll notice it just really doesn't blend well, especially with like whites. Um, let me grab some white paint real quick. My go-to is like, is Golden or Liquitex Basics. Um, golden definitely being the creme de la creme, very smooth. But that's also why I wanted to try out some of these other colors, other uh, companies. I've tried out some of the cheaper ones. Um, so I wanted to try out some of the more quality ones and see yeah, that gives you a nice a nice blend to lighten it up with some golden. Um, so I got that, and I got a permanent blue violet. So that's gonna go nicely on a couple of upcoming pieces that I have planned out. Let's see what I got next. So next, I had to refill on these um, Molotol, this Molotol one for all, um, because I used up the other one. It was so good. I like to like, a lot of times when you um, get this going, you get the flow going on this one, there's balls in these markers. These are acrylic uh, paint-based markers, water-based acrylic markers. They're really good. As you can see, I got a bunch of them right here. And a lot of times when you get it going, these overfill and it can really piss you off. Um, see how nice and pigmented these are as well. See how it covers that, that red perfectly. Um, and you gotta keep your tips clean as well. But these will tend to overflow here and then I just Splash it on my painting if I want to make an abstract paint, uh, painting or some effects. It's really good paint. Um, they do go kind of fast, so I had to refill that white one. I thought I had the bigger white one. With this size of it, I think I need to refill that one too. You can't. They are refillable. You can buy the refills for those. All right. 
Also, I got some uh, Da Vinci brushes, top of Krell. They just had the perfect amount of um, bounce back for me because um, I've, I've noticed that I don't like too hard or too soft. Too soft and you kind of lose control of what you're doing and, and too hard and it won't, um, it just won't. It, it can move heavy body paints and things, but it, it won't uh, kind of blend and flow as easily. It'll leave a lot of brush strokes and impressions on your on your own um, painting. So if that's what you want, then everything has its use. But for in general, I just kind of needed to upgrade because um, I had some a set that I got from um, Hobby Lobby, the Master's Touch set, just like this, the natural looking wood which is good, but these are gonna be a step up. I can tell the quality. It'll probably last a little longer because the the, um, the uh, Master's Touch, they sort of kind of start to um, wear away a little bit quicker. So I just got kind of a various assortment of things I needed to re replace and um, brushes I needed to add. So I got a fine one for hairs, hairs and things. Um, this one is going to be almost like a general round for um, somewhat details, but also just fine lines and tight spaces. A small blender, very lots of lots of detail um, around the small to medium size, even on big pieces that I'm gonna need this for and on number four filbert for blending. Um, an eight filbert also for blending and the medium paintings medium details and number eight just needed a sharper round because over time they kind of fray Let's see if i could show you some of my older ones this one's not in too bad a shape i just started reshaping some of my brushes that's a premiere amethyst from uh yeah pr premiere but you can see some of the the michaels like blenders they kind of fray up a little bit around the edges and things. This is a master touch one. The synthetics, it looks like it, it holds all the blue <laughs> indigos, but it also kind of frays. I can't stand when it gets curly like that. And then it, it puts little pieces of paint like where you're not trying to paint at, and it's really annoying. And the rounds, these are still good. I can reshape it. I probably used this recently, but it's just nice to um, keep some fresh ones too. So yeah, th this one's not really that, even when it's reshaped, it kind of quickly comes out. It's good for like covering a lot of space or just doing a um, underpainting or the second second pass or something. But for, for your final pass, you want that crispness of those lines that good detail so those are the few of those brushes i got this one i think is going to be dope because uh on my uh table it's called like a cabaret stand or something like that um the little stand with wheels that you can roll around it, the space gets uh tight quick when you put all the paint up there and stuff so to have this on the, the little stand next to you or whatever you're working on, TV stand, um, bench, table, it's nice to put these up instead of laying them flat because it takes up less space. So I got this and it's going to be dope. I already know it's going to be dope. So yeah, excited about this one. Let's see. I finally tried one of these pigment sticks. I've been seeing these forever. Um, apparently it's, um, it's oil paint in stick form and it dries. So as opposed to pastels, which don't dry. Um, and I think you can, uh, dilute this with, uh, mineral spirits too. So, and this is like my go-to freaking, um, color right here. It's like light teal, kind of frosty, minty. I think they, they call it, um, Oh, Malachite Green, yeah, right in front of me. 
see how that bad boy spreads out. So let's see, it has wax paper on it. Okay, yeah, you don't wanna peel that down. They just put this little protective plastic around that, the edge so you can get it started, but it's inside the wax. All right, and then that's gonna be like an oil, almost like an oil stick. Uh, okay, definitely not like a, um, wow, that's weird. It has like a, almost like a hard coating around it. And I guess I'm gonna have to dilute it down unless that, that comes off or something, I don't know. No, that's the paint. Maybe it's old and you just gotta get it started. All right, yeah, once you get it started, it flows. It has like a case around it. Almost, I'm not sure if it's like a, a glue or gel case. Um, but once you get it started, it goes pretty pretty easy. Very, extremely easy, in fact. It's nice and nice and buttery. So I'm not gonna do too much of that. I'll fill the whole page up. Let me put that thing away. But I've definitely been seeing this for a couple of years and wanted to try it. Um, it's going to be dope on some abstracts, probably to finish up, put the acrylic under oil on top. Um, so yeah, that should be dope. Also, I didn't get it in this trip, but these are kind of along the same lines. Uh, Sennelier abstract, uh, 3D liners. I don't know. I just, I get excited when I see certain cool stuff and just buy it, but... These are dope. They leave a 3D outline on your painting, kind of like that fabric paint that everyone used as a kid. So yeah, these are these are dope too. Had to get some um, Sennelier oil pastels just to try them. It's been years since I wanted to try this. I just went, went ahead and bought a few and the colors of like pretty much sky, skyscapes. Um, moment of truth here, cause I've definitely been hearing these are super buttery. Oh yeah, pretty much just like the oil stick. And I don't wanna get too heavy into that because I'm going to do some paintings with these. I'm, I might get a set and do some portraits on canvas. Um, But those are for sure butter. Very dope. Very excited about these. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be making some skyscape with just with the, this little sample pack that I got pretty much. It's not an actual sample pack. They just give you these boxes at the store. Um, another brand I wanted to try is Utrecht. So, yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but um, just another brand that I wanted to check out, really. Um, I needed some white, so, yeah, you can't really tell a lot from the basic white, but it seems really, really light, honestly. Um, of course, I get fluid now as opposed to the heavy body. Reason, one, one big reason being that these tops seem to crack under any kind of pressure, even laying it on the table. They're, hold, they're in the stores being held up by the, by the cap. And, but once you lay it on the table, even the slightest pressure causes these to bust a lot. And they can really cut your finger wide open if you didn't realize it's, uh, it's cracked. But yeah, these do this um, a lot actually, and I don't I don't like that. Even the oil, some oil paints that I got do this. Um, so I started just getting the fluid because I also because I mix it with uh, water all the time to thin it down. I paint fairly light most of the time unless I'm doing like a background, but I, I do a lot of layers. Um, so I'm gonna oil it down anyway. I just wanted to try the brand, see if it was quality. Yeah, can't tell much from there, but I'll, I'll definitely let you know um, in the future updates. But it, it seems pretty, I mean, definitely, again, pigmented, fairly pigmented. 
and uh it depends on the mixability really so i think i still got a little bit of that carmine there so yeah i mean it's covering nicely and it's just gonna take for me to get it on the canvas really to see how it actually does Yeah, it's nice and smooth for sure. And what else did I get? I got Brilliant Blue. So this might give me a little bit better indication of the, the characteristics of this paint. Seems really nice, honestly. Oh yeah, that's a nice blue. I didn't have this color, so I try to kind of fill in what color. Wow, and that, and I only put a little bit, and you see how far this is going too. Whoa, that seems like a nice paint, nice quality. I mean, I really didn't put much at all. And it's just freaking filling in dark coverage too. That is nice. So I'm looking forward to getting into those. Um, I got ultramarine violet again for another painting that I'm going to be using this. Maybe you can take a guess. Some of the stuff I like to do has been pretty much music culture as far as paintings, portraits, and abstracts. It's not an abstract. It definitely is a uh, portrait. So, of course, golden. Golden is extremely high quality, in my opinion. And look, it doesn't even cover as much as this did. So that might tell you something. If if I think golden is extremely high quality, this is paper, by the way. Heavy paper for uh, paint, for oils and acrylics. Oh, I got a light pink as well. Yeah, I'm kind of running down on um, light pink for certain portraits. I ran out of this. So let's just see how this does. Very small amount. I'm sorry about the small size of this. I'm probably going to try to zoom in on this. I, uh, I had to shoot this in a very wide angle because I'm just getting set up with... Um, with the camera being overhead and everything so I had some gear that I hadn't used in a while and I decided to break it back out and um, get the overhead shot so we'll see how that goes and last but not least I got this up uh, color globe and the reason I got this is so that I can visualize where a color or tint or shade is in 3d space um with this globe so i saw someone had this and i found it very helpful of the way i think about color because um you have your tints and shades you know your values um from top to bottom uh, levels of saturation and then your different colors going this way so it's easier to then looking in a book or just winging it and trying to figure out the color, I can just rotate this globe and, and kind of pinpoint the value that I need. So that's why I got this to just help me quickly find colors because sometimes certain colors can be a little bit hard to find if you need just like a darker purple for a shadow or a lighter one for a highlight, you know. Um, obviously, that that's just white and dark, but it, it can get more complex with, with skin tone. So... Um, really, really complex with certain people's skin tones when you're painting portraits. So, um, to, to help me find it quicker, I'm definitely looking forward to using this and that wraps it up for this time at the art store. Um, I got some good stuff here again, 
some Amsterdam acrylics, some U Utrecht acrylics, um, one golden and some brushes and a couple of utilities for the studio and also some pastels. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into these and uh, using these. Um, appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. Uh, come back again soon and let me know what kind of uh, videos you want to see. Like, subscribe, share, and check back for more art-related and digital content. Appreciate it. Peace. Yeah.